Alright, so we're going with a part two of the PSA stop video. Uh, I've got a lot of comments on that video, so I uh, thought I would kind of help make everybody aware of what's actually going on. I'm hoping I can do this in a one video uh, and not two, so hopefully I don't ramble too much. Um, give you a short recap on the PSA stop video I'm referred to. I will also put a link to that video in the pinned comments uh, and also in the description. Actually, I'm just going to do the description of this video. I will put a link to that video. Um, give you a short rundown. I was flying my drone in Montana. Um, it decided it no longer wanted to fly and it took off. Um, was unable to stop it um, and long story short went down in the river and was never able to find it um, worked with Skydio their customer service for a while um, turns out it was my fault let's just say that it was my fault um, I was given bad advice by one of their individuals and lesson learned. Let's leave it at that. Uh, I'm still not really happy about that, but did a lot of research on the other drones. Um, still decided Skydio was the best for what I use my drone mostly for, which is the autonomous stuff. Uh, I'm in the vehicle oftentimes alone. Uh, got no spouse significant under that ride shotgun that can, um, you know, fly the drone or whatever you want to do. Uh, so I'm flying the drone a lot. I'm not a good enough drone pilot to be able to fly the drone and drive. I'm just, I'm not. So it makes it easy for me to be able to set the drone to autonomous, follow the beacon, and at that point in time, I can decide with just a few clicks of a button um, where I want the drone to be positioned, how far, how high, um, and all of that. And to have it fly itself really works good for me. Um, if you guys want to see one where the drone basically flew itself, it is the pickle video from the 2022 Easter Jeep Safari. Um, that drone is all autonomous or that video is all autonomous drone and it is flown with the beacon and me telling that drone where to be. That's all that is. Um, so long story short, I went and I got myself a new sky deal. Um, and I still love the drone. There's, I've never had, I mean, yeah. I had one bad experience with the drone, but all in all, the drone to me is absolutely great. Um, the size of the drone is good. Uh, the fact that it's got hard arms to me makes a huge benefit. Um, we have the antenna stuff to be able to fly. So I did go and I got another drone. Now, one of the things that, um, they talked about here and I will show you is the biggest reason that the drone disconnected or had problems was because it didn't have enough GPS satellites or GPS connections. Their suggestion is to have a minimum of 15 over land and if you're going to fly over water, then they want a minimum of 20. So if you keep those two numbers in mind and just make it 20 all the time, then you should have no problems if you ever have an incident with your drone. So let's go ahead and fire this guy up here. Um, and we're going to fire it up so that we can uh, basically show you where this is located in the app and where you can find this because even after they told me I still had a problem um, of knowing where it was so 
Um, we're gonna fire this up here. So, well, let's start from here. Let's see how much battery we got. All right, we'll go with this one. This one's fully charged. So first thing you're gonna do is you slide the battery on. It's magnetic um, and it works good. Press and hold the blue button until all the lights start blinking. Remove the head stabilizer. Um, I actually went and I bought myself some uh, lenses that go on there to block out some of the sunlight based upon how it's how the sun's shining today or that particular day. Um, so. Today it's pretty cloudy, so I'm not going to use or need any of those. Um, all right, so now we have the drone connected. Um, I'm going to also, let's see here, get my beacon out of its holder. And I'm going to turn the beacon on. And first thing we're going to do, and I'm going to, set this back up here so you can see and i'm going to take you guys for a ride here and show you what i got going on here all right so i'm going to fly this with my ipad just so you guys can see here um, a little bit better okay so now the drone should be connected but now we got to connect the phone to the beacon or in this case which would be the um, ipad but right here in this little connection area right here you can see that's where it's going to say that how many satellites we have so you can see right now we have 16 satellites for where i am so let's go back to settings oops not settings we're going to go to info and right here we're going to add the beacon and I hate that this screen does not turn with the other screens. Skydio, that is something that you need to fix. So now I need to type in my Skydio information for my drone. All right. So now we're connected to the beacon and we're connected to the drone. So now we're ready to fly. So we can hit done there. And we are ready to fly from here so we can go back. So we're ready to fly, begin the flights. Uh, we have 17 satellites, we're over land. Um, you can see here we have no water in, in the area. You can see the beacon. It says, well it's kind of dark, but it says ready to fly. Um, so we should be good uh, to go here if we wanted to fly this. So. What makes this great is that from here, all I have to do is either hit begin flight here, boop. And this is what the drone is actually seeing. So as you can see, I pick up the drone and move the drone. So already it's running the remote check of everything. Here you can see it's starting. So it's gonna go through and run its checks um it's gonna tell me that it's an unsafe launch space that's cool i'm not actually going to launch it right now but it's going to start off on motion track which is typically what i will use um because it allows me to follow the vehicle the best um fixed track is another one that i will use um and hover those are the two that i am typically using or the three i guess these the motion track the fixed track and the hover fixed track will keep it in one spot as it flies whether you change up and down or closer or farther away it will keep it that one spot there and follow you hover is where it will hover in one place and as you drive by it will it will basically turn to follow you but the drone never moves. And then motion track is the one where basically you tell it to be in front of the vehicle at X distance and it will stay in front of that vehicle at X 
distance and X height and it'll adjust based on your speed and everything else. All of that is controllable here by the um, by the beacon. So that is the basis of the drone. Um, that's also why I went back to the, put you guys back up here on the dash. Why I went back to the, um, why I went back to the Skydio Plus is because it allows me to do such um, great things. And, and allows me to be able to move in general direction and not have to worry about controlling the drone. So it really helps out in that aspect. So I'm really happy with, you know, the purchase of the drone. I just need to be able to get out and use it more. That's honestly. Um, so from here, guys, that's pretty much it with that. If you have any more questions, guys, leave them in the comments. Um, any other concerns? If you want any other tips or tricks, I'll share with you whatever I've found out that works best for me. So feel free to leave them in the comments, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, share this video with all your friends because that'll help us grow. And helping us grow helps us get out and do more of these things. So um, from here, I might fly the drone on the way out um, now that I've made the video. And I'll make a video about flying it on the way out. So be on the lookout for that one too. So. Thanks again, guys, for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope I answered some of your questions. Remember, the magic numbers, 15 and 20. If you can follow those, you'll be good. Thanks, guys.